everyone. Hope you're having a good day. It is very cold and chilly out here today. Um, we're at the Whitewater Center and today's video is going to be about mental strength and preparation for a through hike. So, um, I believe that mentally preparing for a through hike is one of the most important things to do uh, before you get started, um, before you head out onto the trail. Um, of course, it's so much fun collecting all your gear and testing that out, and that's very important as well. But I believe the mental aspect of, of doing a through hike and hiking a trail and you know taking on a challenge like that is super important to be ready for. Um, it was one of the biggest challenges that I experienced as well as many other hikers that I hiked with um, or knew in uh, 2018 when I through hiked the Appalachian Trail. So uh, that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be a discussion um, about getting ready for that, what to expect, how to handle certain things. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So it is, as you know, a very big commitment. It's, it takes a long time to, to do a through hike. You're, you're planning on at least four to six, seven, sometimes eight months to, uh, to complete a trail. And, um, it, you know, so much thought and planning goes into it as well as money to collect all your gear and whatnot. So, um, have your head in the game is very important. I believe, um, I would like to discuss some things that I went through uh, mentally when I was out on the trail. So when I went, um, of course they, they say don't ever quit on a bad day and, and, uh, or, you know, like a rainy day or snowy day or extremely cold day. And I, and that's, there's definitely something to that. I agree with that completely. Um, there are going to be some pretty bad days out there, especially when I first started the Appalachian Trail. Um, I did not have the gear that I absolutely needed to have. Um, my tent wasn't good. It had major condensation problems. Um, my sleeping bag wasn't good. And um, I didn't have, in my opinion, sufficient rain gear. So there were some extremely miserable and challenging days and nights, especially when I first started out. So um, it would have been very easy to quit and go home. But uh, I want to explain or just mention that everything, nothing is permanent. Everything can be changed, adjusted, and um, reset in a sense. So, you know, I, I was able to fix those problems. I got some gear that, that did work out that I needed. And, um, you know, the, the snow eventually stops, the rain eventually stops. You know, you do get really hungry out there. You do get to a town where you can get some good warm food. And uh, that was another thing that I needed to do that was a real game changer for me was uh, my cook setup was not ideal. I had gone out there and I'm not telling you what to do or you know what you prefer. Everybody's a little bit different. Um, but when I first started, I decided to do coal soaking so I didn't have to carry um, so much cooking supplies. And for me, that was a bad idea because I was not eating enough calories. Um, it was so cold out there that nothing soaked. <laughs> so um, if it's freezing temperatures, the, the mashed potatoes don't get mashed. <laughs> so um, I was having a problem with eating enough calories. So when I got to a town, I was able to upgrade my my um, cook system and was able to fix that problem, eat more calories. So it's it really takes a toll on your mind because it's so, at the moment, it seems so devastating. Even those little things like, oh, being so cold and so wet, just being miserable, being in a lot of pain. Um, and I'm not trying to say that it is completely awful to do a through hike. There are so many amazing points of doing such a, a, an adventure that uh, so much so that I'm going to go again. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm doing it again this year because I, and I can't wait to get back out there. But 
Uh, it's not easy. That's what I'm trying to say is it's it's pretty tough out there and you've got to be ready and you've got to be ready in your mind. Um, you have to be ready for those days that you feel so down and so low that you um, you have a hard time finding a solution. Um, so a couple things that worked for me and I saw that worked for other people were, you know, having a tramley. Um, I didn't necessarily have a, a tramley, but I did have people around me that I could talk to if I needed to. Sometimes it's nice to just vent or um, talk out a solution to some of the problems or get somebody else's advice. Um, Fresh Ground was a great resource for that. When I needed help on resupply or a route or figuring some logistical thing out, he knew exactly what to do and always gave the best advice. Or, you know, if you have somebody that you can talk to, um, if you're having a problem with your gear or a strategy of some sort, you can, you can try to talk to somebody and feel better or have a solution, you know, um, which, which was good. Sometimes you just kind of get in a low state and you just feel pretty rough. So this happened to me when I got to, uh, it was right past Maryland. Uh, let me think somewhere I believe it was in New Jersey somewhere um, I had been hiking I've been doing some bigger mile days and I was just exhausted and depleted and run down I wasn't sick or anything I was just kind of mentally at my limit <laughs> so um, I ended up just kind of taking a half day and I said okay you know I I need a break my body needs a break my my mind needs a break I ended up stopping early like at three o'clock in the afternoon I found a great camp spot I set up my camp I crawled in my tent and I just laid there and played on my phone watched a movie and just had a me day for the rest of the day and uh, it worked out great I was able to reset um, I came back the next day and the next many days much stronger and feeling a lot better um, but sometimes it's necessary to listen to how you're feeling and take a break if you need to um, I know that it was really nice I did not stay in hostels or towns very often but when I did it was a huge treat and I really loved it and that helped me reset um, when I was out on the trail as well so having those things to look forward to, maybe planning that out here and there so you can have something to look forward to is a pretty good idea. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do to kind of break up the monotony and just look forward to. You can look forward to certain foods. You can look forward to maybe posting um, on social media or to your family, your adventure, post some pictures, post a video. Um, that was always a lot of fun, so I felt like my family and friends at home were a part of the journey with me and I didn't feel so lonely. Uh, that helped out a lot, so that's an idea of something you can do. Um, I also talked to and scheduled a time to talk to my husband on a regular basis and that helped out a lot too, that I felt like we could discuss um, just how how we were doing, how each other's day was. and. Uh, we did that on a consistent basis and that helped my mental strength quite a bit. Um, I, I really appreciated that and that worked for us. Um, I know some people just want to disconnect and kind of be in nature on their own for a while. If that's what works for you, that's a good plan. But um, being connected with other people and my family and friends was very helpful for me. Uh, let's see. Um, I went into this trail, into this adventure, uh, knowing that it was going to be hard. So I'm a long distance runner and I've done quite a few long distance races and I've gotten to points out there where it was very difficult to continue, but I always was able to reset uh, and keep going. So one thing, I mean, I've been in races where my body has been so depleted with electrolytes or fluids or I've been in so much pain from my feet or for whatever reason that I, I really didn't think I could keep going. So what I would do is I'd get to the next aid station and I would sit down, have a snack, take a rest 
and reevaluate a plan with a clear mind. And I applied that to doing the trail when I felt like I was just so depleted, so worn out, uh, not having any fun. Um, I took a break, I relaxed, I got some calories, got some rest, and I tackled it with a clear mind and made a plan. And sometimes that plan was to take a rest, take a Nero day, or change things up, or whatever the case was. Look at A lot of times it was just looking at things in a different perspective. Knowing that you're not always gonna be lonely and miserable out there, for very long it's it changes it's like when I when I started to feel down and lonely um, then I I would hit the whites and it, it, that would just rejuvenate me it was just so beautiful out there um, there's so many things to experience and do and you've got to be in a clear mind to be able to go through and experience that to embrace all of it um, that's one reason I'm going back to do this trail again is because there was so many amazing points along the trail that were just incredible that I want to go back and experience it all again. Some of them slower <laughs> this time to really sink it all in. There um, are so many places along the trail that are so gorgeous uh, or a lot of fun to, to be a part of and explore. Like Damascus is so much fun and places like that, going to certain hostels that are really cool, meeting people and having conversations with people that are so much fun. So on those days that you're really thinking that, oh my gosh, this is just awful, you know, around the corner is going to be something different and a lot more fun, so don't give up. Um, that, that was, that was pretty good. When I met my husband in Pennsylvania for the last time, um, I took a day off, spent the day with him, but it was really hard to leave him and that really pushed me into gear to get going and get the trail done. Um, but that, that's when uh, I was pushing bigger miles and, and trying to get done. Also know that it can get a little bit scary out there, especially in the beginning. I was nervous about how, how to be a through hiker, how to resupply, how to do all of this stuff, and if I was gonna be able to figure it out or if I was gonna have a hard time like hitchhiking and, and camping outside every night, you know, that's, it was a big adjustment for me to learn how to do all of that. So that, that gave, excuse me, that gave me some uh, reason to worry. And, um, but I wanna let you know that you do figure all of that out, you do. It's it's not as big and scary and awful as you may think it is. The animals are not gonna get you. It's going to be a lot of fun to camp every night. You do get used to it, your body gets used to it. You acclimate to the weather. Um, you know, it does get easier, even if the first week or two is a little rough. So stick with it, hang in there, and and try to look at the, at the brighter side of things because there are bright sides and it's not going to be that tough all the time the whole time you're going to have moments of, of really good difficulty but you're also going to have moments of just pure bliss and happiness and joy it's so much fun to be out there and to experience being a through hiker and all of it i loved all of it the views the places i got to go how strong my body became you know, the people I got to talk to, the hikers I got to meet that are now my friends. Um, just being, learning to be self-sufficient and, and carrying everything that I need for months on end on my back is pretty empowering. So there's so many good parts to being a through hiker. Don't let the down days and the times that are kind of miserable ruin it for you. Um, you know, sometimes if that's going into town and taking a couple days off to, to feel better and to heal, you know, whatever, if you're, you're sore, if you've got shin splints or your, you know, your feet hurt, whatever the case, you know, change up your gear if you have to, give your mind and body a break and keep going. You can, you can do it, you can reset and you can, and you just have to believe that you can and uh, you don't always have to power through a hard situation. Of course, there's many times when you do have to do that, but you know, you do have time out there. You know, you're going out there for the experience, so don't be afraid to take some time to relax and reset. It really does a world of difference. Uh, when I have done that, uh, I really felt like a new person afterwards, 
and I was able to just keep going and go go back to it a lot stronger and more powerful than I did uh, than I felt I could you know and towards the end I was doing some big mile consistent days it's possible to do that but you do have to take care of your body and your mental strength and your mental health of course um, some things that helped me a lot when I was doing my through hike that helped keep my mind busy and um, occupied I guess or distracted sometimes is I listened to a lot of different kind of music I had podcasts that I downloaded on my phone I had movies I downloaded on my phone that I would watch every once in a while when I got to camp with my earphones on so I wasn't disturbing anybody but and I did not do that every night I did it maybe once a week or every week and a half or so but that was a nice thing to look forward to um, I had lots of audiobooks downloaded and I would listen to my favorite ones over and over um, so, so that was fun and I got to learn something um, I also kept a journal I, I wrote a blog while I was out there and I got to think about and focus on that um, kind of giving me a job or a task to do to focus on was very helpful for me um, some people that were out there the ones that were really struggling mentally a lot um, well some people were working through a lot of stuff and I that's very admirable we're all working on something when we're going out there whether you're planning to or not I think that just happens anything that you've got in your subconscious or conscious mind you seem to have to uh, you've got so much time to think out there and process so <laughs> it's inevitable for that to happen um, and that's a good thing in my opinion I figured out so much stuff came to terms with a lot and uh, let a lot of stuff go which um, has made me a better person all around I believe but the people that were not having as much to do like didn't have a journal to focus on or videos or um, they pretty much got really really bored out there and then they were able to like almost hyper focus on stuff that was a challenge like the weather or how bad they hurt uh, physically or whatever reason um, you know being so hungry and they were just kind of more uh, I would say a little more miserable a, a little longer than some some of us so uh, my point and advice is try to have something to keep your mind focused on and something to do whether that's writing in your journal or you know maybe learning a new language listen to audiobooks or have something that you can turn to when you are really feeling down um, I do this a lot in my races when when I'm doing the long distance races I I know that I'm not a night person so I have I struggle with staying awake at night when I'm doing these 100 and 200 mile races because I'm a slow steady runner and I'm gonna be out there overnight what no matter what so and I know that about myself that it's gonna be a challenge around anywhere from like 10 to 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and so uh, by knowing that I, I have a few funny movies downloaded that I look forward to listening to such as um, you know meet the Fockers or my big fat Greek wedding or um, a few other uh, um, a few other movies that I find that are are I've, I've seen them a hundred times like 50 first dates they're real light movies but they're comedies and it's something that I can um, just put on and listen to in the background to, that my mind can focus on um, that is really helpful and it gets me through the the race in the night portion which is the most biggest struggle for me so I know that that's gonna come I know that's gonna happen and I have something to combat it so I I tell you this to do the same thing when you're out there on the AT or any any um, trail that you want to through hike the PCT or the CDT the long trail the uh, John Muir trail I mean there's so many great trails out there and uh, so I'm glad people are getting out there to explore them but just know that you're gonna have those really low moments and times so just have some backup um, strategies that you can use when you do get to those points where you really need some help refocusing your mind making things a little bit lighter like putting on a funny movie or a funny podcast um, download some comedies that are pretty good and uh, do stuff like that to break up 
you know, the, the thought process, process of being in a low state. And that seems to really help a lot. Um, I've seen other people do it. It's worked very well for me. But just know that it's going to come and know uh, what you can do to help fix that. That's, that's what, the, what I'm trying to say. You know, it, there are so many great moments out there and those are the most amazing memories but there are also some moments that are really tough and and it really does make you stronger when you are able to hike all day in freezing cold rain and and survive it and be okay then you know you're not as afraid for it to happen another time or another day or whatever the case if you've got a really hard climbing day and you're like oh my gosh i don't know if i could do it and then you go out there and you break it down and make things a little bit easier by putting it into smaller portions, then it's manageable and it's doable and then you're so proud of yourself. You know, rather than looking at the whole big picture, sometimes try to break things down into smaller increments that are a little bit more manageable. So, you know, if you're sitting at Springer Mountain, you're thinking, boy, I've got all of this way to go, then you're gonna get really discouraged and uh and kind of afraid but if you look if you look at it like okay well i've got many days to do this and today i'm only going to work and focus on the you know 13 miles that i'm planning to do today or whatever your your strategy is and just take it one day at a time break things down make it a little bit more manageable rather than looking at the whole big picture which is a little overwhelming uh, so don't make that mistake break it down and it's a little bit easier uh, I promise you you will get through this just stay strong have a plan and most of all enjoy the journey enjoy the ride it's it's fantastic it's so amazing out there like I said I cannot wait to get out there and do it again I'm fortunate to be able to go and do it again and, uh, and I'm doing the AT again I've done the AT already and I'm gonna go do that one again just because I had such a fantastic time um, I do hope to do other trails too I hope to do the PCT and the CDT and John Muir and a whole bunch of others and I will get there eventually but I feel that in my heart I really have to relive and redo the AT again. I just had such a life-changing journey when I did it the first time. And I'm going out there with a whole different mindset and expectations um, as far as what I will get out of it and what I'm expecting and what I hope to accomplish. But I, I do know I'm gonna have some hard days and I do know I'm gonna have some even more incredible moments. So look forward to the good times break everything down, have a strategy, and don't give up. Don't give up on a bad day and don't give up at all. Go reset and go back after it and you can do it. I have no doubt you can if you really want to. All right, well, that's a lot to think about. Have a wonderful day.